Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma, also known as Made in the Moment. And today I'm going to be showing you how to knit a top-down raglan like the one I'm wearing and or like this one. This is intended to be not for complete beginners. So if you have never ever knit before, I highly suggest that you stop right now, go look at my how to knit for beginners playlist on my channel, knit through that, make yourself a little practice swatch, maybe try out another one of my easier patterns and then come back to this. If you are stubborn and you really wanna try this, then I believe in you, I think you can do it. It just might be a little bit frustrating and I need you to be like ready for that. If this is your first time coming across any of my patterns, this is made to measure like all of my other patterns. So I'm not going to give you any set sizes. I will kind of walk you through the instructions on how to make yourself a swatch and then knit the piece based on the measurements that you take there. I really like this design. It's super comfortable. I think it goes with a lot of outfits and it really can make just a basic kind of t-shirt and jeans outfit really pop. I think this is a great scrap project as well. If you have a lot of extra scraps lying around, you could do something really cool with stripes, patterns, things like that. You could also do a plain thing and duplicate stitch something onto the front of it. There are a lot of options here. If you like this video and want to follow along with other things I'm doing, you can follow me on Instagram or TikTok. I post on there much more regularly and you can keep up with me on there. I also have a Patreon, which serves as a tester fund so that I can compensate my testers for materials. And I just started a Patreon exclusive podcast. There are two episodes up right now and I am planning on getting an episode out at least once a month and hopefully more if I have time and some good ideas for that. If you need any help with the pattern, then you can email madeinthemoment.pattern at gmail.com for any pattern support requests. Please don't send me any DMs. I just can't get to all of them. And I unfortunately am just gonna have to delete it. So please send it to the email and I will get back to that whenever I can. But that is all I have for you. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So what you are going to need for this project is a pair of circular needles. I have my six millimeter needles. Once you start your gauge swatch, you can figure out kind of what size you want to work with. You will also need about 200 grams of yarn, kind of give or take. I'm going to be doubling these two up just for some fun texture and then using this one as kind of the body of the raglan. You can use as many colors as you want. I think this would actually be a great scrap project and eventually I'll do a scrap version of this. Then you're also going to need a tape measure, a yarn needle, and then at least four stitch markers. If you don't have like official knitting stitch markers, that's fine. You can also just use something like a ring or you know, anything that kind of has this shape and can go on to your needles. The first thing you're going to do is measure actually around your head. And this is basically going to be the width of your neckline. Your knit piece will stretch obviously, but just for the sake of keeping it so that it will actually fit over your head, that is the smallest neckline you can do. If you want something a little bit wider, then add a few inches here and there. So for me, the circumference of my head is 22 inches. And I'm gonna take my tape measure and just hold that 22 inches kind of around my neck and see how that feels as a neckline. Feels good for me. I will insert a clip of myself with this so you can kind of reference that for your own scale. Right away, I'm just going to write down that number 22 inches as the circumference of my neckline. We're gonna take this and put this away for just a second. We will come back to it. And for this project, because it's made to measure, you are going to have to knit a gauge swatch. You can try freehanding it, and I do freehand a lot of my projects like this, but if you've never knit something like this before, I highly, highly recommend following all the steps of the gauge swatch that I'm about to show you. So if you are knitting with multiple colors, start with whatever yarn you're going to use for the ribbing. So you're going to start with a long tail cast on. If you need help with a long tail cast on, I have a more in-depth video of it that I will link right here. But you're going to cast on 16 stitches. So 
So for this, I'm going to do a two by two knit rib. So I'm going to start by knitting two and then purling two. all the way to the end of the row, then I'm going to turn my work and make another row of two by two rib. If you need help with the basics of knitting, I do have a how to knit and how to purl video, and I'll link those so you can watch them if you need this a little bit slower. I'm going to turn my work again and keep doing rows of two by two rib until my ribbing is one inch long. So I have a little bit over one inch of ribbing, which is fine. This is, like I said, just a gauge swatch. Doesn't have to be anything perfect. And now for the next row, I'm going to switch over to my next color, which we can call color two. This is, I have this dark purple here. I like to change colors in knitting by tying a slip knot and then inserting my needle through that first stitch placing that slip knot on my needle and then pulling it through to knit and tightening both of these stitches here and just continuing to knit. I'm going to knit all the way down the row. At this point, I'm going to trim the end of the ribbing color and then just to secure the colors I'm going to tie a knot here and to continue on with my gauge swatch I'm going to do a row of purl stitches and another row of knit stitches. And I'm just going to continue on in this pattern until I have 10 rows of the second color for the raglan. So now I have my 10 rows of the gauge swatch and I'm going to cast off using my favorite knit stretchy bind off. So I'm going to knit two, then insert my left needle into the front of the two stitches on my right needle, yarn around and knit as normal. So knit one, insert, yarn around, pull through, and just continue like that down the row. So I always knit one to have two stitches on my needle, yarn around, pull through, and then keep going all the way down the row. And when you get to the end, take your scissors again and cut the yarn. And there you have a nice little gauge swatch. So what I'm gonna do is really quickly go steam block this and then I'll come back and we'll take some measurements of it. So now you're going to take your gauge swatch and measure across three inches and then count how many stitches are in those three inches. So this is in like the body section, not the ribbing part. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And let's just round up and say 12 stitches. 
over three inches. I'm gonna grab my paper again and we have 12 stitches over three inches. And you can put your gauge swatch off to the side for now. And we are going to do just the slightest amount of math to figure out how many stitches to cast on. I promise it'll be easy. It's basically just to fill in the blank. I'm gonna show you the formula. So we know that, so we know that in three inches, we have 12 stitches and I want to cast on 22 inches. So we are searching for this here, which I will just call A. So basically the way that this is gonna work is you multiply across the equal sign. So if we're multiplying across, we have 12 times 22, which is 264. And then on the other side, we're going to take three and A and just have three A. To get the A by itself, we're just going to divide both sides again by three. These cancel out. And 264 divided by three is 88. So I am going to cast on 88 stitches. And this works out perfectly because 88 is divisible by four. So since I'm doing a two by two rib, that is basically two knit stitches and two purl stitches, which is a group of four. So you want to make sure that this number is divisible by four. This is really important. It doesn't really matter if you round up or down. It kind of can just depend on kind of which direction is closer and if you round it up or down for this first measurement here. There is a tiny bit more math that we have to do to figure out where we're going to place the raglan increases. So I have drawn this kind of basic little picture here to show you this is representing the neckline. This is like a person's neck. Basically 60% of the stitches are going to be in the front and back sections. And then 40% are going to be on over the sleeves. So dividing that by two, the two, you know, front and back and side to side, that will be 30, 30, 20, 20. And the way you find this is actually even easier than what we did before. You're just going to take your stitch count. So that is 88. And to find 60% of 88, I'm just going to take 88 and multiply it by 0.6, that is 52.8, um, we'll round later. So leave any decimal points at this point. And then to find 40% of 88, we're gonna take 88 and multiply it by 40. Sorry, I don't know why it won't focus on my writing. And that is 35.2. At this point, you could also just to subtract this number from 88 and get the same answer. We're then going to divide both of these by two. So 52.8 divided by two is 26.4 and 35.2 divided by two is 17.6. So I'm going to round this one up to 18 and round this number down to 26. So using a diagram kind of like the one I made before to visualize this, there will be 18 stitches in between the stitch marker here and on the back, and there will be 26 stitches in between these two stitch markers. So now after all of that prep work, we're finally ready to cast on. So I'm going to take a nice generous long tail and tie myself a slip knot and then cast on 88 stitches. Once I've cast these on, I will show you how to join in the round. The way that I like to do a long tail cast on is by tying a slip knot. Then I place the slip knot onto my needle and tighten. And I hold my fingers like this with the long tail over my thumb and the working yarn that's attached to the balls of yarn over my finger. And then I have them both pinched 
in my hands like this. I go under the piece of yarn that is closest to me. Then I go around like this and through this way and then tighten all of this. Here's that again, under, scoop, and over. And like I said, I have a full tutorial. It's pretty short just on how to, if you want to see that even slower. And I'm going to cast on 88 stitches. And once I have cast all of these on, I will come back to you and show you how to join in the round. So I have just cast on my 88 stitches and now I'm going to show you how to join in the round. Before you start to join, check and make sure that nothing is twisted. So make sure that all of the stitches are lying flat. This is unfortunately one of those things where if your ribbing is twisted at the beginning, it can't be fixed later on. So really like double, triple check. What it looks like if it's twisted is it'll look like this. So see if you're following the stitches, following them around, and then it kind of loops under and comes out this side, you would want to twist it back around. I like to check this by having all of the, kind of the base of the stitches be inward. I feel like that's just visually a pretty easy way to check to make sure it's all, all straight and all good. So I'm going to take my needles and the side with the active yarn is going to be is going to be in my left hand and the side without anything is going to be in my right hand and I'm just going to push these stitches to the edge of the needles and take one stitch off this end holding it carefully in my hand and then I'm going to slip this stitch off of the left needle, placing it on the right needle. And I'm going to pick up this stitch from the right needle and put it onto the left needle. This basically just closes any gap that would appear and you are ready to start knitting in the round. At this point, I would recommend taking a stitch marker and slipping it onto your needle to mark the beginning of the round. We're going to do a few rows of two by two rib and I'm going to do a folded neckline. So I'm going to make my ribbing twice as long as I want it to actually be so that I can fold it over and then I'll show you how to continue from there on out. But I'm going to start by knitting two. So insert my needle, yarn over and through. And I find that the first row is always the hardest because I tend to cast on fairly tightly. So it's all about kind of loosening up those first row stitches just to kind of get, get it going a little bit. And you're just gonna go all the way around in two by two rib. So I've made it all the way around. I'm going to slip my marker for the beginning of the row and knit and then keep going. So I'm going to knit two. And then purl two. So you'll kind of start to see this ribbing forming. These are the knit stitches and these are the purl stitches. This is what the, it will look like. So make sure that you have these little V's sitting on top of each other and these little bumps sitting on top of each other for the purls. I want my ribbing to be one and a half inches and since I'm going to fold it over, I'm going to do a little bit over three so that once I fold it, it's kind of about one and a half inches. So I will knit until my ribbing reaches three inches and then I will come back and show you what to do next. All right, so I have knit three inches of ribbing and now I'm going to fold this collar 
and start knitting on the body of the piece. So if you are not doing a folded collar, you can kind of just skip this step. You can switch colors if you want to, and then just keep knitting. The first round is just gonna be a normal knit row, but if you are folding the neckline, it's going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to start by inserting my needle into the stitch knit-wise. And then I'm going to, like I said, I'm folding the collar. So if we look here, down this line of ribbing, this stitch, I want this stitch down here to close up to here. So I'm going to insert my needle into the equivalent stitch on the bottom here. And this first move is a little bit tricky because there's so many different things going on, but I'm also gonna change colors right now. So just to show you that again, I inserted my needle through the first stitch knitwise and then just right into the bottom of this ribbing here. You can also do a provisional cast on here and in that case you would be doing basically a three needle bind off here, but I prefer to just do it this way because it works just as well for something like this. So I'm going to place my slip knot onto my needle, tighten, and then pull the slip knot through that stitch that I inserted into down here, and then through the knit stitch on my needle, and then just throw that off. So you can kind of see we are closing it up down here, and then I'm going to take the tail of my slip knot here, and the tail of my, what used to be my working yarn, and tie them together. Nice double knot. Then I'm going to trim the yarn for the ribbing, which was color one. Now we are just gonna be working in color two for a little bit. So again, you're going to insert into that stitch here and then down into the equivalent stitch on the bottom of the ribbing, yarn around and pull that through both of those loops and throw that off. Once you get going a little bit, it's a little easier to see which stitch you're going into. So another way to kind of think about this is these are purl bumps, right? So on the, the other side, you'll be looking for knit stitches. So I insert knit wise into the purl stitch. And then down here, I'm going to find that first knit stitch and insert my needle right here, yarn around, pull through, and throw that off. And like I said, just keep going just like that. Can take a little bit of figuring out how to do this, but you're just gonna go around and knit every single stitch. Another option if you are more of a beginner or if this is just like not working out for you, you can just knit, you know, as is, and then you can go back later and sew this in half. That's also an option, totally works fine. I just personally would rather do this while I'm knitting, even though it makes this first row take a little bit longer. So I have made it around my collar is now folded and since we have calculated where all of the four corners will be the start of each row is going to be directly in the back of the work this will be the front section these will be the two sides and this is the back so the first number that you calculated for the 60 percent you're going to divide that by two i had 26 and 26 divided by two is 13. So I am going to knit 13 stitches and I'm going to actually take the beginning of the row marker off because I actually like to just look at where my tails are and use that to see where the beginning of the row is. And I'm gonna have four stitch markers here anyway. So I'm gonna move that off to the side for a second. So I'm going to knit 13.
and then place a stitch marker. And then for my 40% for the over the sleeves, I had 18 and this time I'm going to knit that full amount. I only knit half here because we're starting basically halfway through that number. So now I'm going to knit 18 and then place a second marker. Then I'm going to place my next marker here and I am going to knit 26 across. This will be the front. Then I'm going to do my 18 stitches again. And place my final marker. Then I'm going to knit to the beginning of the row. Now I'm going to show you the pattern for increasing, which will be at each of these spots here. So you're first going to start by knitting until you're one stitch away from the stitch marker. And before you knit this stitch, but right next to the stitch marker, you're going to make a right leaning increase. So to make one right, you're going to go into this bar right here that's in between the two stitches. So if you look really closely, there's this kind of bar right here. This is where you're going to pick up. So you're going to insert your needle from back to front, and then you are going to knit through this front loop here, just as you would normally, and then knit that stitch, slip your marker, knit the next stitch and now you're going to make one left leaning increase so for this one you're going to insert your needle from front to back so for make one right it's back to front make one left it is front to back and you're going to knit through the back loop so instead of knitting through here because if you do this you'll see a hole you're going to insert your needle into the back loop and then knit as normal and it's not going to be completely obvious at first, but you'll start to see these increasing stitches moving in this direction down this seam. So I'll do that one more time for you. So you're going to knit until you're one stitch away from the stitch marker. Now you're going to make one right. So to do that, go from back to front, knit through the front loop, and then knit one. Then you're going to slip your marker, knit one stitch, and then make one left. So this is going from front to back and then knitting through the back loop. And then just carry on. So you're going to repeat that again for these next two corners. So knit until you are one stitch away from the stitch marker. Insert from back to front, knit through the front of the loop, then knit one, slip your marker, knit one, insert from front to back, knit through the back of the loop, and continue to the next corner. So that is the end of my first increase row.
The next row is just going to be all knit stitches, so no increases at all, just knit all the way around. And then the row after that will be an increase row. So you're alternating between increasing and not increasing. So for my last raglan that I did like this, I did a stripe pattern, which I'll show you really quickly. For this piece, I did eight rows of the dark green and then four rows of the light green. I just alternated down the top. If you look here, you can kind of see how this increase seam is going to start looking as we continue on. I'm just going to continue in this pattern, making one increase row and then one row with no increases until the length of my raglan from the collar to the bottom of it is seven inches. I got this number by measuring from my collarbone to right kind of where my armpits start. I'll insert a clip of myself measuring this against my body and I'll also show you what the piece looks like when I get to that point. The nice thing about top down pieces is that you can kind of try it on as you go to judge like how fitted you want it to be. So if you want the armpits to be a little bit tighter, you might stop a little sooner. If you want them looser, you're going to keep increasing for longer and then you'll close it up and knit the body and then we'll add sleeves. So I actually did end up adding stripes to this just because I thought it would be fun. If you want to follow my stripe pattern, I'll put the number of rows on the screen so you can follow along with that. At this point, ideally, and like if I'm doing things technically correctly, I would switch to a longer cord, but I don't have one. I actually broke the little attacher thing for my interchangeable set, so I am just knitting on a cord that's way too small. And because the cord's too small, I can't try it on, but I'm gonna show you my trick for what I do so I can try it on anyway. I actually have the cord that I broke and I'm gonna use this. And basically I'm just gonna transfer like half of the stitches onto this just for a second so that I can try it on, see how it fits, and then move on from there. You can also use a piece of scrap yarn. You can use any spare needles you have lying around. And all I do is I take whichever side has the ball of yarn attached to it and leave that on these needles. And then I just start slipping stitches onto the other cord. Like I said, there's definitely better ways to do this. Um, I could just buy myself some new needles. I could buy myself a cord that's actually long enough to go around my body. But since I'm choosing not to do that, I'm gonna show you what I actually do. <laughs> and since I know a lot of you probably are in the same position as me where you don't always have all of the supplies that you need. So here's one of my little tricks to do when you don't. And I'm going to slip the marker as well. Okay, so there's no perfect magic amount to do, but I have slipped enough stitches onto this spare cord and needle so that this part can kind of lay flat and the back part is a little bit scrunched up still, but like significantly better than it was. So before we split off for the armholes, I am going to transfer the stitches back onto my one pair of working needles. If you didn't do this, then you obviously can skip this step, but this is what I'm gonna start with. And to transfer them back, I'm basically just inserting my needle back through the stitch and slipping it off. Really quickly, we are just going to bring back your gauge swatch and measure across two inches somewhere in the center of the swatch. So I'm gonna actually go about here. I'm going to count how many stitches are in two inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If for some reason you don't have your gauge swatch, we did calculate how many stitches were over three inches. So you can just divide this number by this number to find how many are in one inch and then multiply that by two. We have this number, eight stitches. This is the number of stitches in two inches. So what you're going to do is you're going to, at the beginning of the row, knit until you're eight stitches away from your stitch marker. Then you're going to go ahead and grab just a random scrap piece of yarn. It doesn't matter exactly how long it is. It just has to, I would say you want it to wrap around your bicep a couple times. And you're going to get your yarn needle and thread the yarn on your yarn needle. 
And then exactly how I transferred stitches earlier, I'm going to insert my yarn needle through the stitch like this and just slip it off of the needle. So these are the stitches that are going to be going above your arm. And then we're gonna be closing up the body right here. So go, go ahead and slip these stitches off. Once you get to the stitch marker, you can take it off and remove it because we're done increasing now. And then you're going to slip off all of the stitches in between the stitch markers. And then when you get to the next stitch marker, you're gonna slip off eight after it. So it's symmetrical. So I've gotten to the stitch with my stitch marker. I'm going to take this off and then slip eight more stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to pull my yarn through and you want to make sure that there's a tail kind of on both ends. I'm gonna take the yarn needle out now. And then just for ease of keeping track of everything, I'm going to tie a kind of pretty loose knot here in the scrap yarn. You want it to be something that you can pretty easily untie. You can also cut it later if you need to, but just so the stitches don't fall off of the edges. And what you're going to do next is move this kind of flap out of the way and you'll see that the next stitch on your needle is kind of under here. So basically what we have created is a little sleeve right here. So now that we have this kind of sleeve flap that's going over the arm, we need to create the section that's gonna go under the arm. So what you're gonna do is something called a cable cast on. It's pretty simple. I'll show you how to do it. So you're gonna take your work and flip it around so the purl side is facing you. Then you're going to take your needle, insert it purl wise into that first stitch there. Then you're going to yarn around as if you were going to purl, pull that yarn through, and then just slip that stitch over the needle. And then repeat that again. Insert purl wise, yarn over, pull through and back again. And you can see you're starting to add some stitches here that will be under the arm. This is another one of those spots where it's going to be a little bit tricky to figure out exactly how many you need to cast on. What I'm doing is I am once again using my gauge swatch and I basically just took this and put this underneath my armpit and the width of the gauge swatch is the width of under my armpit. I'm going to cast on a few less stitches than the gauge swatch just because I want the armhole to kind of come in a little bit. So I'm probably gonna do about from here to here, which is again, 12, 12 stitches, three inches, which is my gauge for the project. So I'm going to cast on 12 stitches but I'm being intentionally pretty vague because it's going to vary. The stitch count is going to vary so much depending on your size and your yarn choice and your needle size. Perfect. That is my 12 stitches. Once you are done casting those on, you're going to turn your work back again. And now we have this kind of floating little edge here that's gonna go underneath just like that. And you're just going to start knitting. I recommend that you knit that first stitch really quite tight if you can to prevent any gapping. It's gonna seem like you're kind of overdoing it, but it will kind of work itself out. So you're going to knit across until you are eight stitches away from your next stitch marker.
You're going to keep knitting until you are the equivalent of two inches away from your stitch marker. So for me, that is eight stitches. And I'm going to grab another piece of scrap yarn and thread my yarn needle. And then repeat the same steps where I slip the stitches off onto the yarn needle. And once I have slipped off all my stitches, I'm going to pull my yarn through and tie that scrap yarn again. And then repeat the steps to cable cast on. So I'm going to flip my work, insert my needle purlwise, and cable cast on 12 stitches. And once I have cast on my stitches, I'm going to turn my work and knit to the beginning of the row. And I'm actually going to change colors now. So if you are interested in doing the striping pattern, all this is how you change colors. So I'm going to loop the yarn around my finger like this slip the marker that I placed at the beginning of the row. This is optional. You don't have to mark this if you don't want to. I just wanted to, to kind of keep track of where I am, but I'm going to insert my needle through that first stitch, then take this loop and pull it through like this, just like a knit stitch. And then I'm going to continue knitting with my new color. And then there's differing opinions on this, but I personally like to tie off these ends right here. I'm going to wait until I've come around here and knit the row first. So there's going to be a little bit of a hole for a second, but I'll close it up pretty shortly. And now all you are doing is just knitting around. There's no increased stitches, nothing to worry about. This is always kind of my favorite part of the raglan when you're just working on the body. It's like, it's mindless knitting in the best way. Something to note when you get to this cable cast on, make sure that you make your stitches nice and tight for this first row, just to combat any gapping that might occur. And especially as you're going from the cable to that first stitch of the body, nice and tight, like even tighter than you think you need to. And then just keep going all the way around. So I'm coming back around to the end of the row. I'm going to finish this, slip my marker, and then knit a few stitches past that. And then this is the point where I like to tie up these ends to kind of close this hole. If you see right now, there's a pretty big gap and this some people like to just weave in the ends, but I personally am terrified of things unraveling. So I always just like to give it a nice knot just in case. 
and then I'll weave these ends in later. And then for my striping pattern, I'm going to do one more row in this lighter purple, and then I'm going to switch back to my darker purple. Since the stripe is such a short stripe, I'm actually leaving this purple yarn attached. So once I come around, I'm just gonna pull it up and use that, and I'll show you that as well. And here I am coming up on the end of the row. I'll show you how to switch colors back. It is very simple. So I'm just going to knit that last stitch, slip the marker, go to knit, and then I'm going to pull this old, pull my other color around like this, kind of locking this one in place here, and then just knit along like this. I'm going to snip the old color as well, and this time I'm actually just going to immediately tie this off and then when I come around next, when I come around on the next row, I'm going to tie this yarn off with my working yarn. But basically from this point on, you can really start to see this raglan shape forming. The sleeves look kind of funny right now because they don't have any anything on them. They're just kind of these flared uh, sleeves, I guess. You're going to keep knitting until the raglan is about an inch and a half less than the length you want it to be and then we'll add ribbing on the bottom. So I'm going to spend some time knitting this. I'm going to probably watch a lot of YouTube and work on this also in rehearsals for the opera that I'm in and I'll come back to you when I am ready to add the ribbing to the bottom. I've got the length of my raglan here just for your reference from the top of the collar down to the bottom of the, the bottom of the piece, I have about 14 and a half inches. And now I'm going to add the ribbing on the bottom. I'm going to do a contrast ribbing with the same light purple yarn. So I am once again going to change the color here. And I'm going to do a knit to purl to ribbing, just like on the collar. So knit to and then purl to and I have not counted if the amount of stitches I have at this point is a multiple of four. If it's not, I'll show you my little trick for what I do at the end. But I'm just going to go around and knit two, purl two, all the way around to the end of the row. So I've made it all the way around and this is my knit two. Here is a purl one and I am basically one purl short of having a multiple of four. So I'm just going to pick up a stitch right here. I'm going to go from back to front and insert through the front loop purl wise, purl around like this. And now I have a multiple of four. You can either count your stitches and actually make sure you have multiples of four, or you can just do a little either increase here or decrease here so you get the right amount. And I'm going to continue on in the pattern, knit two, purl two. And this point is where I like to tie off my tails. And I'm going to keep knitting this ribbing until it is about an inch long. There's no magic length, just kind of when it looks done. And when I get to that point, I will come back and show you how I am going to bind off. So I have finished my rows of ribbing. I did a little bit more than an inch. I think I did closer to like an inch and a half. Yeah, about an inch and a half. But again, it's just up to you what your preference is. I'm going to slip this stitch marker off. 
So I'm going to start by knitting two stitches. And then I'm going to take my left needle and insert it through the front of these two stitches here and then yarn around and knit these two together. I'm going to knit another stitch so I have two stitches on my needle, insert through the front, yarn around and knit together. And then I'm going to do that all the way around. All right, so I'm down to the last couple stitches. I'm going to purl my last stitch and then pull this stitch over. And then for my very last stitch, I'm going to, to insert my needle into this, basically the column of the first knit stitch here of the round. I'm going to pick up a stitch by yarning around and pulling that through. And then I'm going to close that up like this and cut my yarn and pull that through. And here is what the ribbing looks like on the bottom. Now I'm going to show you how to pick up stitches along the edge of the armhole. So the first thing I'm going to do is get all of these stitches onto my needle so I can work with them. So basically I'm just going to insert my needle through the stitches like this while the scrap yarn is still in there. And I should say this as well, these sleeves, the way I've designed this, do end up a little bit flared. You'll kind of see once I try this on. Maybe not flared, but like they're pretty roomy. If you prefer a tighter sleeve, then when you pick up the stitches for your sleeve, make some decreases there. And now that I have all of these stitches on my needles, I can get rid of this scrap yarn. I'm actually just gonna cut it and then pull this through and now that's gone. And I'm going to attach my working yarn in this corner down here. And I'm going to pick up stitches along the underside of the armhole as well. So I'm gonna start by inserting my needle right here, right in that first stitch, pull my yarn through and then insert my needle yarn around and pull that stitch through. I'm going to skip the next stitch, insert my needle into this stitch right here and the next stitch as well. And then skip the next stitch, go in through here and pick up two in a row as well. Skip insert and insert. And now I'm just going to start knitting as normal. Again, on that first stitch in the corner here, I'm gonna pull it nice and tight and then I'm just going to knit this around. All right, so I've gotten my sleeve to the length that I want it to be. For reference from this armpit part, I have two inches. This is totally up to you and your own preference. So I'm going to change back to my contrast color one last time. And I'm going to knit one row all the way around. and then continue with my ribbing. I'm going to do, again, a two by two rib. So I'm gonna start with a knit two, and then I'm going to secure these ends. Knit two and then purl two. knit two, purl two, and all the way around. Again, I recommend that you use the trick if this is not divisible by four, just increase or decrease at the end. I know it's probably technically not what you're supposed to do, but with these kind of made to measure patterns, I hate doing any sort of stitch counting. So I kind of just make little changes where I need to in the seams and stuff where no one will see it anyway.
somehow I actually ended up with an exact multiple of four. So I am just going to continue on knitting two, purling two, until my ribbing is about an inch. I have finished knitting my ribbing and now I'm going to cast off the same way that I cast off for the bottom band. So I'm going to knit two stitches and then insert my left needle through the front of those stitches that I just knit and then knit these two together. And that is the cast off pattern. This is for a nice stretchy cast off so the edge doesn't get too like stiff. So I'm going to knit another stitch, insert through the front of those two stitches and then knit these two together and repeat all the way around. All right, I've come to the end of the row. I'm just going to knit this last stitch, knit these two together. And then I'm going to pick up a stitch on this first cast off stitch that I made to kind of close out the loop. Then I'm going to knit these two together one last time. and cut the yarn and then just pull that through like this. And I'm going to go ahead and weave in this end right away. So I'm just going to thread my yarn needle, then insert this down into here, loop around the stitches. Then I always weave in one direction and then back in the other to secure it and make sure that it doesn't pull out when the fabric is stretched. So you're just going to go through and weave in all your ends and then you're done. Thank you so much for watching. If you follow this tutorial, please send me any pictures of the piece that you make. I would love to see. And of course, if you post any pictures or videos, tag me at Made in the Moment so I can see what you made and share it on my Instagram. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. me window